Hello YouTube, it's man George Page coming to you live, recording live. And I want to talk about a subject that has been on my mind for a good while. I tried to cover a few videos on it, but it just didn't come out right. So, if you notice this picture, that's Jamel Robinson, or Robinson, if you want, how you want to pronounce it. And that's with his 90 month old son, Tristan. If you know anything story about Jamel, Jamel was shot and killed in Illinois where he's working as a, a bodyguard at a club, or a security guard, correction. And he was shot by the local police officers, police officer in the, the city that the, uh, the club was in. Now, the club was a club, I forgot the name of the club, was in, uh, in Midland, Illinois. And the club had issues, I think they lost their legal license or something like that. And Jamil was working as a security guard and he was licensed to carry. Now, a situation happened at the club where a man, you know, he started in a fight, come back, and he shot a few people. Some people got injured. Jamel took the man down without even pulling out his gun. Well, police came, and all they saw was a black man with a gun, and they shot him, and shot him. And many witnesses stated that Jamel was wearing security, you know, wearing a vest and security on the back of it. But because the, you know, the mindset of the police is that anytime you see a black man with a gun, shoot first, ask questions later. Well, no more than maybe a week after Jamil's murder, another young black man, a former um, army, army uh, soldier, was killed in a mall in, Alabama, in Montgomery, Alabama. Ermac um, uh, Fitzgerald Bradford Jr. was a uh, a soldier at the mall where another active shooter started. He was helping out, doing what he was supposed to do. And that's when, you know, as your training kicks in and you want to help out people. Well, police saw him with a gun and Alabama is also an open carry state where he was registered to carry. EJ, as they call him, was shot in the back of the head. Now, explain to me this, why you shoot this man without asking, hey, say, hey, put your gun down, freeze, you know, but they saw a black man with a gun. And that's always on the police's mind. That's the problem with policing. See, you go back to it, after slavery, when a lot of blacks were free, they had no place for them to go. They had no home, the home they knew, they couldn't go back. It was a struggle. Basically, the prison system was originally created by the Quakers and was to reform people. When you did your time, you got a Bible, you were sent on your way. But the prison system now in America is about just apprehending and detention and whatever money they can make off, especially with some programs where we create private prison. EJ and Jamel were two good young men. And as the narrative of the, of the NRA, the National Rifle Association, good guys with a gun. But it doesn't matter, because they were black. And let's, let's admit the NRA is a white supremacist group. And no better than the Ku Klux Klan, Nazis, or any white supremacist group. You only care about the rights of, of white people. Now, let's go back to another situation a few years ago on one Mr. Alton's, um, yeah, sorry, wrong person, Philando Castile. He was another black man who was registered to have a gun in a state where he's living in, in Minnesota. And because he got stopped at a, in a, by a police officer, told the police officer, I have a gun. I'm registered to carry. He was gonna give that man the ID, but his scary ass decided to shoot this man in his car with his fiance and her daughter. I've seen the video. That little girl, she was, she was strong for a mama. Her mother was crying, sad, but she was strong for her, saying it was okay. But the family did not get justice. What happened? The cop was, you know, set free. But was no longer he was no longer become a policeman. Here's the problem is, police officers get the benefit of the doubt, always, when it comes down to situations where unarmed, armed, not resisting, resisting, running, standing, talking, anytime black people do anything, when we get shot, killed, maimed, we're the ones that fall. Jamel Robinson was a good young man, a church-going young man, a father. At the time of his, of his murder, his, his wife was, was only a few months pregnant. 
E.J. Bradford was a young man. He was a soldier. And even though they're going to say that, well, he got a general discharge, so what? At least he tried. He went in. He did what he could. Maybe it wasn't for him. That's a simple fact. There's, there's plenty of, of um, young men and women who go to the military and get discharged because either they didn't fit the standards of what the military wants. And those are very strong standards. Like I said, I have a niece and nephew both in the Army. Even myself thinking about joining the Marine Corps, but I don't think it wasn't for me. But here's the fact is, these, is this keeps happening. The murder of our, of our, of, of our black children, our sons, our daughters. Sandra Bland, Tamir, you know, Tamir Rice, you know, and, you know, I, I won't say count Trayvon Martin. He was not killed by police, but he was killed by a, a wannabe security guard. We should have just mind his business. Let him just walk by, walk down the road and go his way. But because he wanted to prove something, Joe Zimmerman, he murdered somebody and got a spot way free with it in an open carry state. And just another issue, just summer past, where a young black man was killed in a parking lot in Florida, which is famous for open carry. He was defending his girlfriend, had a man in his face arguing about a damn parking space because it had a handicapped um, uh, uh, sticker on it. So what? That's none of your business. You're not a cop. If he had come up and get a ticket for that, that's on them. But here's another situation that happened. And I'm, well, I'm just going to talk about it real quick. It was um, just this summer also where this time a white male went at the Uber driver. The, the, this Uber driver was a former police officer and he was licensed to carry. The man called and threatened the man because he thought he had his girlfriend in his car with him. So what happens is he comes, he's, he's driving his truck, just slam right in front, front of the Uber driver, gets out, and he has something in his hand. Where well, being an ex-cop that the Uber driver say, ex-cop, a cop, ex-cop, whatever the Uber driver say he was, and being that this man threatened him and it's in the dark, he know who he was, so he shot, so he shoots him. He's regretful for what he did, taking somebody's life, but he gave him no choice. The girlfriend wasn't even with him. He then dropped her off and picked up another passenger. But the family of that of that guy, because he's white, looking for, want you know the, that gentleman to be arrested because he was defending himself. That's the double standard when it comes down to, to um, open carry, or you know stand your ground. When the situation when actually was standing ground really means something, it's narrative that, oh wow, he's in the wrong. But when the situation is when the person actually is in the wrong for what he did, then wow, you know. I don't know. I want to speak more about this later. But right now I'm at the laundromat drying my clothes. And <laughs> but I want to wish the best for the families of EJ and Jamel. You got two young good men and going off to a better place. Eh. It's a man, George Page. Like, subscribe. Don't like, subscribe. I'm out. <laughs>